So over the last three years, Tampa, Florida has really grown in notoriety and more importantly, it's also grown in terms of population. It has become an absolute destination from people all over the world, but most notably people coming from the Pacific Northwest, the West Coast, the Midwest, the Northeast, and Canada starting to call Tampa Bay its home. Well, what is the reason? Why is everybody so in love with Tampa, Florida? Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover just that. My name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent. I help people just like you buy, sell, sell, relocate, invest in the Tampa Bay area. And hey, if you want to know all the things Tampa, let us be your trusted resource. We spent a lot of time and energy putting these videos together so you don't have to run around chasing down all the information. I'm not the absolute source, but I love sharing my city with you and it's an absolute pleasure to document that journey with you. One of the reasons why people love calling Tampa Bay home is because it is a wonderful place to raise a family. Now, those aren't my words. That's according to niche.com. And one of the things I want to make note of is anytime I make reference to a website or an article, I always link that in the description below. So if that interests you, go check that out. But here's one of the things that Niche said, and I love this. I love looking at articles like this, digging in and trying to see if, if it, is this real? Is this what I'm experiencing in my city? And here's what I found fascinating. Eight of the top 10 cities in the state of Florida that were ranked the best places to raise a family are in the Tampa Bay area, which is incredible. We're talking about areas like Hyde Park. We're talking about areas like Fishhawk, Palmasia, Harbor Island, these beautiful communities here. And here's what I also found fascinating. There were another seven in the top 20, making 15 of the top 20 cities, according to niche.com, in Tampa Bay area, the best places to raise a family. Now, we're gonna get into schools here because I think if you're you know, raising a family, one of the questions we often get are, you know, what are the schools like? And uh, as I've discussed before, I'm a licensed real estate agent, so I'm not allowed to tell you if something is good or not, but here's what I am allowed to do point you back to those inf that information. And there is a wonderful website called Great Schools. I would strongly encourage you to check that out. Again, it's listed down below. But one of the things I wanna make note of right away is Florida is not known for its uh, K through 12 school systems. Um, they rank not great nationally. And you know, you guys, if you've been watching this channel at all, you know that you know we share the truth. And I don't have a tremendous amount of perspective here because we homeschool our kids, but right? I live in a neighborhood full of kids and parents and they tell us everything about it. The community that we live in, the adjoining elementary school is amazing. Everybody raves about it, but all of the parents, once they get out of that elementary school, they take them to the next city over. Now, what I think is really cool about the Tampa Bay area is we are a school of choice. So you can take your kids really anywhere, but there are some really good schools in the area. So I live in Largo, just over the Indian Rocks Beach Bridge on the Gulf Coast, right by the Gulf of Mexico, which is awesome. We're about 40 minutes west of Tampa proper. Um, and the city just south of us is Seminole. It's a great city. It's really known for its schools. It's highly desired because of that. They have one of the best high schools in the entire county here in Pinellas County, which is something to take note of. But the other thing that we have access to in, in those communities, especially the ones that niche.com referred to earlier, those communities all have very strong school systems. If you go look at great schools and how they're rated, and they take into account, you know, graduation rates, kids going to college, all types of factors. And again, when you go to those websites, they'll really break it down for you. So check down below in the description. But the, the cities that are known for raising families, all of them have very strong schools. And on top of that, Tampa was just ranked number five for 2023 best college cities in America, y'all. That is really cool. We've got some great colleges here. Again, I'll put that link down here below. Go check out the colleges in the area. We were ranked number two for larger cities. I thought that that was fantastic. And again, while Florida may not be known for its education system, the Tampa Bay area really hits the mark here. So just make sure you do your homework and then the city you're looking at moving into the Tampa Bay area has one of these really good school systems. Another thing drawing people to the Tampa Bay area is our jobs. Tampa currently has a very low unemployment rate of 2.7 compared to the national average of 3.7 at the time of this recording, which is awesome. Everyone is hiring in the Tampa Bay area. Tampa has become the unofficial tech hub of Florida, which is drawing in all this really young talent. And you know, when people hear Florida, they think immediately think all retirees 
retirees. And the dirty little secret is Tampa, the, the median age in Tampa is 36 years old. And the reason being is it because they are attracting very highly skilled young talent in the tech industry. 25% of all the tech jobs in the state of Florida are here in Tampa. We have over 50 SaaS companies, uh, software as a service and software companies uh, that call Tampa home and are headquartered here, which is really cool. We also have the financial institutions that are here, uh, anchored by Raymond James, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers play at at Ray J, uh, uh, Raymond James Stadium. We've got the defense contracting. We've got um, Raytheon, Honeywell, McDowell Air Force Base is here as well. So a lot of good things happening in the Tampa Bay area. Obviously, we are in a bay, so we have maritime, right? There are cargo and cruise ships that come in and out of Tampa, which call it their home port, which is another thing that drives uh, traffic. And then tourism, of course, you know. We have over 4 million visitors a year that come to Clearwater Beach alone. So you talk about St. Pete Beach, Clearwater, Tampa, Madeira Beach, John Pass. There's so many things. The Valspar open when it comes to Palm Harbor. And these are just things happening in and around the area. Now I want to get into one of the most obvious ones, which is weather, right? Florida is called the Sunshine State for a reason. If you're considering making a move from the Northeast or the Midwest, you know, you just like myself in the past are very familiar with those very long, dark, cold, damp, dreary, some most of the time snowy, wintry weather. And it just really weighs you down. Ultimately, you know, the seasonal depression thing, that can sneak in for some people. Other people love it and God bless you. You can keep that, <laughs> right? But for the rest of us who really long for that sunshine, it is a huge adjustment when you make the move down here. Now, if you're coming from Los Angeles where it's sunny every day and it never rains, it's gonna be an adjustment. We have humidity, right? And we get rain, so it's gonna be different. We are subtropical climate here. So it's different. But here is what is really cool about our weather, right? During the summer, we're talking about, you know, May, June, July, August, September, even in October, we average the eight high 80s in terms of temperatures. And then during the winter, we usually hit those uh, low 70s, the mid 70s. And we'll have a couple really cool nights. You know, January, typically our coldest month of the year where our average temperatures, you know, will hit right at about 70 degrees. Um, and we can even see some low 40s and even high 30s at night, which does give you some seasonality for people who are used to that. It's not a long duration, y'all. Like we use our heat maybe twice a year and we don't have a furnace in the house. So you'll either use a fireplace if your home has one or um, you'll use the heat pump, which is basically they take the air conditioner and turn it backwards and then that creates heat. And I know I'm simplifying it, but that's basically how it works. But our weather is absolutely incredible. From November all the way to Mother's Day, basically Thanksgiving to Mother's Day, it's just lights out. It's the reason why people want to retire and move here overall because the weather is absolutely stunning. We get over 260 days of sunshine annually. That is the reason why people come down. I tell people all the time, you do not have to shovel sunshine. And taking advantage of that world-class weather are world-class beaches. Tampa Bay is home to some of the most incredible beaches in the United States. You've got Clearwater Beach in Clearwater, Florida. You've got St. Pete Beach. You've got Madeira Beach. And here's the dirty little secret, y'all. We have roughly, I would say, 17 miles or so of white, sugary sand beaches that are all very similar to those beaches that are nationally and recognized across the United States as being the best beaches in America. TripAdvisor has ranked St. Pete Beach and Clearwater Beach the best be beach in America. And again, Madeira Beach has snuck onto that list, I think has uh, made it ninth on that, that list as well. So these beaches are absolutely stunning. We talked about the white sugary sand. Um, the, the temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are the biggest draw here, like we talked about. Yeah, we have warmer weather um, during the summer, but that keeps our water temperatures extremely warm and it's really shallow. So unlike the Atlantic coast where you get that cool Atlantic current and uh, you've got a pretty uh, deep uh, ocean there, the Gulf of Mexico is not an ocean, it's a gulf. And it, you have a huge self shelf that goes out some places for miles. And you can walk you know, between your hip and your chest for quite some time. And that keeps that temperature, that water, really pleasant. And the other thing it does is it keeps the water from getting crazy in terms of like huge waves. If you're a surfer and you're looking to come to the West Coast, you're gonna be pretty disappointed because we don't have big break here. Um, that's something that you have to go to the East Coast to find and really 
Honestly, it's not over there either. You know, if you're a surfer, you already know, like the West Coast of the United States is, is where you go surf. But if you're, you know, if you've got young kids and you wanna go someplace where you're not worried about crazy rip currents and what's going on under the water all the time, this is a really great area to come check out because our beaches are absolutely world-class. And hey, if you're getting any value out of today's video, please hit that like button. That lets everybody know that this video has some value to it. If you're considering making a move to the Tampa Bay area or know someone that is, please feel free to share this video and hit that subscribe button if you're into all things Tampa because we're gonna deliver that right to your inbox every single week. Now let's get into the real estate and what it actually costs to live here, right? I remember you know, four years ago when we decided to make our move, we were learning about Florida. We visited a bunch of different cities. We went to places like Jacksonville, Orlando, and Tampa, um, and Deltona. You know, We were looking at different areas throughout the state and we had some prerequisites, right? Like we wanted an area that was getting younger not getting older. We have a young family that was important to us. It may not be to you, but also a place that I felt had a good mix because at the end of the day, if you've got, you know, young working professionals, young families and seniors in a community, that's usually a pretty healthy uh, city. And what we ended up settling on was Tampa because it had all of these things that we're talking about today. And then it was also growing in terms of its real estate values. And at the point when we made the move, I felt like it was really undervalued, right? Being in real estate, calling this my profession, you study areas all across the United States. And what I recognized was coastally, Tampa was a steal. The word got out over the last three years. Everybody and their brother seems like they've moved down here. I mean, just last month, another 8,800 people moved to Tampa, Florida, which is crazy. It's had an explosion. But here's the cool thing about that, right? At the time of this recording, the median sales price of a single family home in the Tampa Bay area right now is right around $400,000, according to Redfin. And at the same time, the median sales price in the United United States is about 397,000. I think it was 397,500, which is absolutely unbelievable. When you think about that, right? That is the, the median, right? The middle. And yes, in the Tampa Bay area, you can spend as much money as you want. We just listed a 14 million, when I say we, there was just a property listed. It was a $14 million estate in Terra Verde, right down on the water. It's absolutely stunning. Wait till you see this thing. Oh my God, Mediterranean style. It's unbelievable. Um, check that out up here. It's, it's just lights out. Uh, but you can still find a condominium down here for under $200,000. I mean, at the time of this recording, there are manufactured homes for $15,000, right? And again, there, I just showed you a listing of $14 million. So this is paradise. You can come find a home basically any, any price range. Now, the closer you get to the water or the closer you get to downtown, the more expensive things get. Okay, so everybody, you know, when you when you when you make the phone call, when you reach out to us, you're like, hey, I want four bedrooms, um, you know, three baths, new construction, three thousand square foot, and I'd love to be three minutes from the water. Well, you can get that, but you're going to have to pay for the for what you're asking for. So just to keep that in perspective, but you can absolutely find a great family home or a great single family home or a great condo or town home or villa, whatever you're looking for to support your needs in the area, in the price range and the budget you probably have in mind. And like I said before. If you have any questions or you'd like to know more about that, just feel free to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below along with the resources we've been discussing today. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation on how to help you make your dream a reality. And last but not least, we got all of the activities that again, comes with the weather, comes with the beaches. I mean, when it comes to activities, if you are an avid outdoorsman, Florida is definitely gonna serve you well. And I know some people can be apprehensive because of the heat and it does get hot, y'all. I've said this before. I've got my pros and cons video. We'll link that up here uh, because it is important that you keep those things in perspective. But at the end of the day, you know, you can be boating, kayaking, fishing, paddle boarding, you know, kite surfing. You can go skim boarding. You can just go hang out on the beach and relax, right? We have ice skating rinks here. We have soccer leagues here. You know, everything that you are thinking of, you have access to it at your fingertips. There are even BMX courses in the area, which is really cool. We've got some really well-known mountain bike courses, which I would have never imagined, just outside of Fishhawk and Lithia, they're using this old sulfate mine, and it's a really well-known mountain biking course. And I think that's really cool. We've got camping, outdoor spaces for days. I mean, there's mermaid shows. You can go check out the manatees. We got springs. If you can't find it here, something is wrong because everything is at your fingertips. Now, 
The one thing we don't have is mountains. Don't let anybody lie to you. <laughs> the Florida Hills, as we refer to them, those are overpasses. Like it's pretty flat here and it's very low. But when you think of this, and this is the reason, right? When we boil all this down and when people say, hey, this is the reason why I love living in Tampa, Florida. Well, I just gave you seven. They're absolutely incredible. When you distill it all down, it's no wonder why people love living in Tampa, Florida. The quality of life in Tampa, Florida is absolutely incredible. You know, the flip flop lifestyle, the sunshine, the beaches, it is just absolutely wonderful. Our people are inviting. The hospitality is absolutely great. You are going to love calling Tampa home. Or if you're just considering visiting, come check it out. I'm sure you'll find something that you absolutely enjoy. You know, again, we talked about all those amenities. We even talk about bush gardens and the aquariums and the science museums. There is so much to do here in Tampa, Florida. And hey, if you're considering making that move, don't hesitate to reach out. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.